Um, so you didn't actually have much trouble at all with the first step of the mechanism, the category one, but the category three uh, aspect usually gets, gives people trouble. Again, the key thing is it's actually very logical. Since in order to get the first attack, we have to deprotonate the alpha carbon. So in order to get the second attack, we deprotonate the alpha carbon again. And then it simply attacks and kicks off the oxygen. But let's confirm this in our handout. Let's find the page for the aldol condensation in the handout. Maybe that's uh, page four. Let's see. Yep. Okay. Aldol condensation on page four. Um, and you can see it can either be category one or category three. Um, and in both cases, the nucleophile is the alpha carbon in the enolate. Mm -hmm. So uh, you didn't have any trouble on top, but here in the middle, we have a, on the left-hand column under heat, we have a category three attack. Mm -hmm. And the one step that gave you uh, trouble here was this step here when the nucleophile loses the proton a second time. So notice, and who's the nucleophilic atom? The alpha carbon. Mm -hmm. So this step didn't give you trouble. The nucleophilic atom loses the proton, and then it attacks the carbonyl carbon. Mm -hmm. And then the carbonyl oxygen gains a proton. And then the step that did give you trouble was when the nucleophile loses a proton again. Mm -hmm. uh, and when the nucleophile loses a proton again, um, then it, uh, it's going to, uh, and then it can attack, uh, and then it can kick off the carbonyl oxygen. So this was the one step that uh, gave you some trouble. Okay. Of course, it's also good to be able to do this without the mechanism. Mm -hmm. So. I think the key to getting this without the mechanism is thinking in terms of these patterns here okay. and putting in your labels. So notice overall what's happening is if it's a category one, here's our category one, the carbonyl, uh, the, the carbonyl has instead turned into a alcohol and the alpha carbon is attached to it. So this carbonyl is gone. And in the category three, the carbonyl oxygen is completely blasted off, and there's a double bond between the alpha carbon and the star. So the key to getting this without the mechanism is, again, putting in these labels, right. I think, and maybe sometimes putting in numbers would help as well. Now, another point to make here is, notice here, I gave you a lot of help by drawing two separate versions of the aldehyde. Sometimes they only... But they don't actually have to do that. They could have just said... They could have just given you this and said, predict the product. And there's lots of it in the... Uh, yeah, they could have just said this and predict the product. Because after all, this doesn't mean there's only one molecule of the aldehyde, right? Um, there's billions of these. Mm -hmm. So even if they only draw one of these, you can still draw two pictures for yourself okay. and say that some of them will get deprotonated and some will get attacked electrophilically. So we, they, they're not under any obligation to draw two pictures of the aldehyde or the ketone at the start. Remember, this could also work for ketones. Then we would get an alpha beta unsaturated ketone at this step, or a beta hydroxy ketone. Incidentally, in that other series of videos, I said that this reaction only works under base catalyst. But your instructors actually said that you could also do this less commonly under acid catalysts. Um, so you should know that you, uh, your instructor wants you to know that you can do this under other acid or base catalyst. Okay. We won't go through the mechanism for the acid catalyst. I think base catalyst is a lot more common. But he might give you a predict the products problem with an acid catalyst. The product would be exactly the same. The products would be exactly the same, except that the, um, the, you wouldn't get hydroxide, you'd get water at this step. But the main product would be exactly the same. The catalyst only affects the mechanism. It doesn't affect what the product is. And for the most part, he still sticks with the acid catalyst. Again, all these steps are reversible. Let's go through the mechanism here. So let's start by, uh, when you're ready, try to decide what would happen first here.
Very good. One thing I did mess up, I messed up my notation on the carbonyl carbon in the original carbonyl oxygen. I labeled the wrong molecule. I labeled the enol A. Yeah. There's no point putting asterisks over here because this is not acting like the electrophile. Correct. two separate aldehydes or ketones reacting with each other. If you think about it, the first example we did was when one aldehyde reacted with another version of the same thing. That's not the normal case. A crossed aldol condensation or reaction is when two different aldehydes and ketones are reacting with each other. So there's some new complications here. Now, you made this left-hand molecule into the enolate. Correct. Why didn't you make this one into the enolate? Because there's no alpha carbon. Very good answer. That's a very good answer. We don't need to worry about this becoming an enolate because there's no alpha carbons. In this case, uh, that, so there's no alpha hydrogens. In this case, there's no alpha hydrogens because there's no alpha carbons. Now, you avoided a very common mistake. A lot of students get confused, and they think this is the alpha hydrogen. Uh, but we, this is not the, the acidic proton. This is not the proton we can lose. You might have seen that discussed in some of the other videos. The aldehyde hydrogens don't do anything. Aldehyde hydrogens don't do anything except confuse people. It's the alpha hydrogens that get deprotonated. So it's good that you avoided the mistake of trying to take off these protons. This doesn't even have any alpha carbons, much less alpha hydrogens. By the way, this is formaldehyde, a one carbon aldehyde. So you were right that we should treat this like the electrophile. I put the asterisks here, and this is the, the nucleophile. Um, and once again, some instructors would put the negative charge on the oxygen here, because there's another resonance structure, but I think it's better to put it on the nucleophilic alpha carbon. Now there's another complication, though. Now you showed this alpha carbon attacking the formaldehyde. Mm -hmm. However, it seems perfectly possible that the alpha carbon could have attacked the ketone. After all, not all of the ketones are going to form enolates. Only some of them are going to form enolates. So it seems perfectly possible that the alpha carbon could attack this ketone, too. Well, that would be a problem because then we would get a mix of products and we want a pure yield. Now, it actually turns out that your assumption was right and we're usually not going to attack this ketone. We usually are going to attack the formaldehyde, but we have to have a reason for that. Well, it turns out that this formaldehyde carbon is much more electrophilic than this ketone carbon. It's much more reactive. But we should be able to give an explanation for why that is.